Powdery mildew is a common disease in Alberta that occurs on a wide range of host crops. It's caused by a number of different fungal pathogens. However, each one and each strain is very host specific. So while the symptoms may be similar, the causal organism is often different. Powdery mildew can occur on crops such as cruciferous crops like broccoli and Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, radish, rutabaga. It can also affect lettuce, peas, rhubarb, cucumbers, strawberries, Saskatoon berries, raspberries, and black currants. And you'll often see it. It's often associated with things like peas and the cucurbit crops, cucumber and pumpkin and those types of things. But it does occur on those other hosts. Powdery mildew is interesting in that it can't survive without plant host tissue. It develops typically in the spring or in the fall. Conditions that favor powdery mildew are warm, dry weather in sort of the moderate temperatures to warm temperatures, 15 to 27 degrees Celsius. It does prefer high humidity, so when there's stale, stagnant air, that's when powdery mildew will occur. If there's wet, rainy conditions, it's often inhibited. So if you find poor airflow, sh high humidity in shady areas or in dense areas, dense canopies, that's where you're going to find powdery mildew. And those conditions that it prefers do tend to occur in the spring and the fall, although it can occur in the summer for sure. Powdery mildew is typically spread through windborne spores. However, it does produce a sexual spore called Chlysothecium that overwinters. Powdery mildew is fairly recognizable. However, you don't typically notice it until most of the field is infected. Initially, you might notice an off-color portion of the, of the plant or in the field or you might see some talcum white spots that develop. Over time, white powdery or mealy patchy mycelial growth on the upper and sometimes lower leaf surfaces will occur. On the, it'll also occur on other above ground plant parts, such as suckers or stalks or even on the fruit. Over time, the patches coalesce and, and grow together to form these big patches. Leaves gradually fade through shades of green and turn tan color, becoming shrunken and may die or obsize from the plant. In some crops, such as strawberries, you might see the leaves kind of curl upward a little bit and may have a purplish underside, but that doesn't always occur. Young raspberry canes may be distorted or shrunken spindly or may die back. But in a lot of cases, the main symptom is sort of stunting or yields may be reduced because what's happening is the fungus is sucking the resources out of the plant. And so you're going to see reduction in yields and, and size of fruit and even the maturation of, of fruit may not occur. Powdery mildew can often be mistaken for something like botrytis, or botrytis can be mistaken for powdery mildew in crops like strawberry, because you'll see a sort of a white mold, and you think, okay, well, that's one, that, that's botrytis. However, um, with botrytis, you'll see a soft rot that's associated with that, a watery soft rot, whereas powdery mildew is very dry. It's just su sort of superficial and on the surface, so it's not going not gonna to be the same way. Powdery mildew ne is managed in a number of different ways. You can rotate to non-susceptible crops using varieties that, or cultivars that are less susceptible. But the big thing would be to encourage adequate airflow and ventilation with any sort of canopy. So that can be done through making sure that you've got adequate plant spacing, pruning to improve canopy ventilation, and removing any element that creates high humidity conditions such as stagnant air. So make sure that your shelter belts aren't too thick, that you don't have blockages or obstructions to airflow, um, ensuring that it's, things aren't too shady, that there's not places that stay dry and, and sheltered all the time. You can remove any sort of infected or um, damaged plant parts if the incidence is low, remove crop debris as much as possible, and uh, clean up things after that, remove any non-crop hosts like weeds or volunteers. You can also apply registered chemical controls if that's um, appropriate. Overall, powdery mildew isn't necessarily something that can cause us huge amounts of damage, but it can definitely nibble away at the, at the productivity of a, of a crop.